everybody, it's Maggie Bot, and this is your post Gen Con wrap up. I am home now. I spent one day in Chicago, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Indianapolis, and then another day in Chicago, and then flew in last night. I arrived home at like almost midnight, uh, so it was quite a whirlwind. It was a very long vacation for me. I, I usually take one vacation a year, and it's in November for BGG Con. So having two this year will be pretty interesting. We'll see what work is like tomorrow. I'm really, really nervous about going back to work. But um, either way, so I had a crap ton of fun. <laughs> I saw a ton of people. I apologize if I do not mention you in, like, a tagged social media post. I was an idiot, an idiot, and I did not write down everyone that I talked to. So I'm afraid to just tag a couple of them because I talked to a million new people. Uh, one thing I will say is I really, really, really appreciate anyone that came up and said, hi, I'm X, you sort of know me from Twitter, it's really nice to meet you. Um, the ones I'm really kind of sad about were the ones that said, hey, I just saw Maggie in the hall, didn't say hi though. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if that was just because people didn't know how to approach me or say anything, but um, the one MVP, I had one guy that saw me at breakfast, didn't want to bug me, and then later was like, hey, can we like meet up and still say hi? <laughs> and then it worked out really well. We had like a drink, and I ended up being super late for a different appointment, but it was totally worth it. Um, so my new friend, Steve, <laughs> uh, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, saw, I saw a lot of games <laughs> from feet away. <laughs> Most of my Gen Con was people. Most of it was running around and talking to people. And I know that there is an opportunity to just sit down that whole time and play games. I probably could have done that. But the tendency for that, if you want to use your, your Gen Con that way, you are going to tend to see fewer people and experience fewer things and be part of less experiences overall. Because... You will sit down for longer, you'll have to learn the games and play them. And the people that are more than willing to do that are probably going to be a smaller group of them, so you're going to probably see the same people over and over, which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a different experience. In the way that I experienced Gen Con this time meant butterfly socializing between a million different groups of people, barely seeing anyone enough, but having some really good, strong interactions with people, which I don't normally get to do. I got to see friends for longer periods of time than I normally would have, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, a couple of highlights for me, day zero was uh, was crazy. Day zero was just a big old pile of crazy, so I won't even go into that one. I'm sure you saw some pictures from me and Steph and Nicole and Paul Dean and our new friend that was going to marry us all. Um, that night was really, really fun, and um, Thursday... The biggest highlight for me for Thursday, I mean, I, I saw people in the hall and I did a lot of things, but um, the DFW Nerd Nighters event, they do a um, gaming evening, right? So everyone comes in and there's a bunch of tables and a bunch of donated raffle games, and they chose a charity called Poor House, which uh, benefits the homeless population in Indianapolis, which anyone that has been to Gen Con can see the true-to-life evidence that the homeless population is really large there. And um, it's hard to be homeless. It was like pea soup outside. It was 90 degrees. I was dehydrated just walking outside, let alone living outside. I couldn't imagine. So the fact that they raised a whole lot of money for Poor House is amazing. The event was about 700 people. Um, I ended up going in the middle of it to a different panel, which was good. It was a women in gaming meetup uh, from Greater Than Games. Unfortunately, it ended up being a little bit more like a panel than a meetup, in my opinion. Um, there were about eight women kind of singled out at the front of the room who got to ask and answer some questions from everybody and then like a mingling. But it was a front of the room with a bunch of uh, rows of seats, so it didn't really lend itself to mingling that well. Um, I was very glad I went to that because I ran into uh, Weird Draft Games and um, the woman that is CG Units on Twitter um, who ended up, I guess she was volunteering with Asmati Games, who I love Asmati Games, so I'm surprised I hadn't run into her before. Um, and I got to see, I, I got to see a lot of people. Um, I was glad I went to that, but it was very different than I was kind of expecting and it was a little bit more... <sighs> It wanted me to have more intelligent questions for the guests of honor than I was prepared to have. So I, I felt kind of underprepared for that panel. 
and I'm I'm glad I went, but I may not have gone if I had known, which sounds really bad, but I am glad I went, but it was right in the middle of that DFW Nerd Niners event, and I feel like I missed some stuff. I missed the raffle and most of the auction. Uh, when I got back, I kind of butterflied between different tables of people. Everyone was pretty wrapped up in their own gaming, um, but one cool thing I got to do is just kind of sit with people I don't normally get to talk to for long periods of time and just kind of catch up with people. I got to see this amazing, like real like huge version of Carcassonne that a guy had made and I posted his Twitter information and stuff on my Instagram um it's like DJ Harvey I'm gonna get the numbers wrong so it's on my Instagram but he made uh so they're like floor tile size Carcassonne pieces with giant maples a magnetic board and this really cool bag that you could like put everything into when you were done um, most of it was to scale except for the the board because that would have been a ridiculous size and that was really fun and social and we actually got another group to come and play on that and meet them um, after that was done I hung out a little bit with Tony Miller and did a half a play test of a game called flow from a guy named Tam out of New York and I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I swear I have seen this flow game on a video somewhere. Y'all probably know. I it was like a tabletop deathmatch or something. I don't know what it was, but I swear I have seen that somewhere. But it was a really neat one. It's a time travel game. So four different ages. And your whole objectives are to get certain resources into certain ages. But you need to do that by linking times together and cooperatively moving around the board. It's the kind of co-op I can stand. So I was very happy to try it. We unfortunately ran into time. Uh, let's see. Friday night was the AEG party. I ended up in, an, in a playtest for the entire AEG party, which was kind of unfortunate. It was, it was a good thing because I got to see a game called Cutthroat Kingdoms, and I think it's coming out next year with a little bit of tweaking and a less random audience. I think that game could be really fun. I would really want to play it at four players instead of six and um, not in a hallway that was screaming. I By the time I got back to Chicago with my friends, my ears were ringing louder than almost anything you could say or do. I was having such trouble hearing, but um, I think... Overall, the AEG Big Game Night was pretty fun. I got to go to the Dice Tower Live event that day. One cool thing about Dice Tower Live event this year is that they knew they were on at the same time as the Fantasy Flight in-flight event, which is like where Fantasy Flight announces all their big stuff. So they sent Jason Levine over there to live text it to Tom Vassell, who on stage was like reading tweets from Jason Levine. It was, it was highly entertaining. And then the Dice Tower itself, they had some really huge news, including Eric Lang's new board game was announced there, which is Rising Sun in the same line as Blood Rage. It is based on a different mythos though and what he said is like the area control from Blood Rage, if that ancient ancestor was Risk, then this new Rising Sun, the ancient ancestor would be Diplomacy, which is way more up my alley and I love Blood Rage so I'm very excited to try it out. Um, there were some fun guests, there was a lot of singing, and it gave me a chance to actually catch up with Z a little bit, and um, we ended up being able to hang out later at the con, because he and I never got a chance to really sit down anywhere, because the Dice Star crew is always so, so busy. So that was a really good, positive thing that happened on Friday. Um, Saturday, I'm having trouble remembering what I did. All of my days kind of blended together, which I'm glad I have some footage of it all. Um, but Saturday was a ton of fun. I demoed for Check Games Edition uh, for the for the afternoon. I taught Prodigals Club. <sighs> so I have one big regret, and I really, really wish I had the information of these poor five people. I taught Prodigals Club to two people who had played Lost Well and three people who hadn't played any of it. And I taught them a rule wrong, and it's been bugging me ever since. Um, when I came in, the boards were already set up. I thought I was on a 10 to 6 shift. I was supposed to be on a 9 to 5. So I taught five people on a three-player board. That meant the Hyde Park mechanism didn't make any sense. So the way that I interpreted it out of the rules by looking at the 2 to 3 and trying to interpret it to, for 4 to 5, just it, it wasn't the correct rule. So if any of them happen to see this... I'm very, very sorry. I know I taught it to you incorrectly, and I'm very, very sorry. But otherwise, uh, teaching Prodigals Club with two modules is a breeze and a half, um, and that game plays 
way faster. It's like an hour and 20 minutes and pretty simple game. So I, I still like the three modules better, but it's nice to know that both work pretty well and one is like super, super fast. Um, the rest of Check Games was the only time you're ever going to see me in a bright pink t-shirt, so have fun with that. Um, I got to see uh, Paul Grogan, who does Gaming Rules videos. I saw my friend Josh Given, Givens, who works with CGE, and I got to witness Vlada uh selling Codenames pictures with the, with the point of sale at the front. They taught him how to sell a game, and the second he was up there, he unfortunately got kind of swarmed with cameras and stuff, um, but it was one of the funniest moments I had at all of Gen Con was watching Vlada sell his own game. Um, I do have a copy of Coding Pictures, if you can see it up there, and I, I know that you might have seen this stuff, but this is like the funniest promo that I've ever seen ever, because they made spy glasses. It's so good. Oh my god. So this way we can give the spy masters the glasses they need so that they're not cluing into other people. I'm so excited about this. It's so cool. And because I wore these, you probably just got a reflection of how messy my house is because I haven't cleaned it in a long time. <laughs> we got home and just like threw stuff everywhere. Uh, so that was Saturday and Saturday evening. <laughs> Again, all these days are run together. It's really, really hard to remember. Uh, I know I did stuff. I did, I did stuff. I had camera proof that I did stuff. Um, Sunday was my interview with, I did an interview with Sage Kanai, I did an interview with Tom Cleaver, who did the Valley of the Kings games, and they also gave me the new, the last rights, the new Valley of the Kings, which I'm super excited to try, and I got to interview John Clare, so John D. Clare did, uh, Mystic Veil, vale. and at the AEG party, I kind of shook his hand and said, I really like your game. He had seen my review, so I'm super psyched about that. Um, I'm really excited about that, actually, because uh, apparently AEG took some notice to that, and um, I will be probably offering to do reviews on their games if they're a little bit more in the strategy field, kind of like Mystic Veil vale is a little bit more of a strategy game than a lot of AEG titles, um, especially when Edge of Darkness comes up. So Edge of Darkness is the follow-up with the card crafting system. Um, also, Mystic Veil's vale expansion comes out in October, which is sooner than I thought. So I am super excited about all my AEG news, and I got to see Seiji Kanai's next prototype, which was really cool. And um, it had a princess, and <laughs> it was a co-op with like an NPC mechanic that you try and like get everything out of her way before she goes and destroys an evil kingdom. Um, I really loved that, and the interviews. The actual talking to them and everything else went better than I thought. They're about five minutes long. I have not tried to edit them yet, and I will see how that goes. Uh, so Sunday, the last part of that was really nice because I had an extra hour, right? Like I normally have everything really, really tightly scheduled, and I'm like running around trying to get to the next thing, making sure I get to the other thing on time, making sure I see the people I want to see. But on Sunday, I was just like hey, I've got an hour until I had a, a, a lunch appointment with my friends Nicole and Adrian, and I thought it was going to be Stephanie too, but Stephanie had to go to the airport, so it was just me and Nicole and Adrian, which is great, but not the same. Um, so I just kind of said, hey, you've got some time, and these guys um, tweeted at me that they had a prototype they'd like me to take a look at. So I met them up in the demo hall, and they were going to give me just like the three-minute spiel, and I was like, you know, I've got a little time. Do you want Do you want to show me the game? So it ended up being, um, it's kind of an LCG style game. It feels a little bit like Hearthstone. I know you're not supposed to compare games to other games, but it felt a little bit like Hearthstone because it had kind of that mana system and it didn't use phases like magic or a stack. So it's a card fighting game without a stack. So it reminds me a little bit of Hearthstone. Um, in it, you have like five slots on your side and five slots on their side and your goal is to get them down to zero health. You start at 30. And it's a 30 to 35 card deck. It's a very small deck, but apparently there are no milling. There aren't reaction cards, even though there are things like sorceries in the game and um, trap cards like in Yu-Gi-Oh. But there, it, it's apparently not common for the deck to run out. So it's a 15 to 30 minute game with 30 cards. So take that as you will. Um, our play of it on camera lasted about 40 minutes, but that was with a lot of talking and a lot of distraction. I'm just going to try and edit all out. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, I 
set up my GoPro to record it, and I was going to record the audio on my phone, but they had audio equipment. So we're just going to switch files. I'm going to send them the video. They're going to send me the audio. Um, so this is the Rival Books of Aster from Stitch Media. I met the two designers who had prototyped it on cardboard, um, built it as an app, which is on iOS in Canada only right now. And um, then they were so kind of smitten with the, the cardboard version, they decided to try and get into this market. Um, they've done a Kickstarter before, but it was in children's books, so they've never done one in the gaming industry. Um, so I kind of gave them my cards and stuff and told them that if they had questions or even supply qu chain questions, because that can be really weird in the States, to give me a call later. Um, and that was Sunday morning. had a fabulous dinner with Nicole and Adrian just to kind of catch up. I saw more Nicole in this than I saw all of BGG Calm last year. So I was super lucky, lucky, lucky to have seen her, even though she was off on crazy adventures most of the time. Um, then on Sunday, we took off. Shortly after the hall closed, uh, I wandered around the hall a bit and said goodbye to everyone. And saying goodbye to people were was really hard. So we hung out at the Marriott Lounge for a while just in case anyone wanted to say a last minute goodbye. And after that, we went back to Chicago and crashed real hard. Me and Dan read some rule books. I read The Order of the Gilded Compass and he read Islebound. And the next morning was really nice. Uh, we both woke up, got some bagels from Chicago. I think it was like the Great American Bagel Company. And um, we played Islebound and Order of the Gilded Compass. And then we had to go to the plane. And now I'm back here. So 20 minutes later, this is my vlog for today. Um, I will be trying to schedule some editing time for the footage I have. I have no idea where to start. <laughs> But I am going to go meet my friend Ross, and we're going to chat scheduling game groups here. More, more on this later. Hopefully my cave of disappointment over here will, will be getting smaller as we go. I don't know if you can see, but I did pick up robots and vast. And I, I've got Order of the Gilded Compass done here because I've only played it once. But I hope to get all of this stuff played out very, very soon, especially Sunrise City expansion. Um, I love you all. Thank you for all of your updates, uh, if you've unfollowed me or whatever, because of how many things I posted this week. I apologize. I know I had, I had something like 130 followers and 70 unfollows, because I think it was just a little bit too much for people, which is perfectly understandable. It won't happen every day, but, uh, maybe they'll, they'll come back at some other time. Maybe they'll just mute me for a while. Who knows? But um, I've had a lot of time, uh, a lot of fun catching up with people as I've been back. And I have to send out a special thank you. I don't know if they'll watch this, but um, Aaron and Ryan from the Cardboard Republic really hooked me up. I did not get into the queue for a downtown hotel room for Indianapolis. And that was really where I was hinging on whether or not I could go to Gen Con. And so the fact that they, like, no hesitation, offered up space in their hotel for me and um, brought me snacks and are fabulous people and I love them was so wonderful that I am really, really lucky to have friends as good as them. So if you do not already watch Cardboard Republic, it is CardboardRepublic.com. They do a YouTube channel here where Erin usually does her kind of hauls and first impressions. They do fabulous written articles with both reviews and some other content. They do a podcast called the Vox Republica. I know there are two other people involved in Cardboard Republic, but I haven't met them yet. Um, I can't recommend them enough. And for those of you who might not know this, I also have a Patreon, which is uh, actually, it's doing pretty well these days. It's up a little bit from last month, and it was up a little bit from the month before that, and it was up a little bit from the month before that. It's patreon.com slash MaggieBot, and that extra money allowed me to buy this fabulous GoPro. It helped me to purchase my hotel room. It's going to help me get into an editing computer because I will likely be going GoPro only for a while until I get another DSLR after December. So it's been a huge improvement in helping me make this small hobby of mine something a little bit more um, important. And um, it is also helping me focus my content for Meeples Included, which is another website I've been working on. So if you haven't seen that, it's meeplesincluded.com. 
um, over there. It is a collaborative effort between me and seven other fabulous people. We are all doing a lot of gaming content of lots of different kinds. And um, that has been a huge, huge focus for me for the last couple of months, even with all of the other stuff going on. Uh, Maples included will have a new podcast. Uh, Jason and I will be re-recording our failed, failed attempt at our first one uh, probably in the next week, and we should have that edited up in the next two weeks. It'll be the Chit Chat Gaming Podcast. So um, that's all the news I can think of, but I have loved catching up with y'all, and I will see y'all later.